Um, I'm calling Simon O'Connor. Thank you, Mr Chair. Um, I want to take one quick issue with the member who was asking a whole series of questions of why do small businesses have issues. Well, um, I'd actually just encourage her to go out and talk to small businesses. It's one of those sort of novel things which MPs uh, can do. I have to say, there's a number of... It's, look, it's one of those really strange things, I have to say. Um, I find it myself, just moving through the electorate of Tamaki, a number of small businesses. Yep, from time to time, people will ask questions of what it's about. The funny thing is, by them asking a question and you feeding back, they're usually quite comfortable with it, because, as has been noted in the purpose of this bill, it's a chance for businesses to better engage with government, but importantly, too, for businesses to engage between each other. Now, Mr Chair, I don't actually want to get too bogged down on where the primary discussions have gone. Most people have been focusing on Clause 28 and referring to Ria Bond's uh, SOP. I think that's almost been done to, to death. I think, fundamentally, we are not a government about compelling government agencies uh, to act in a certain way in this particular circumstance. And importantly, when we start talking about, as the SOP does, that all government agencies must use the um, NZBN or the New Zealand business number, we're not simply talking about the likes, let's say, the Ministry of Social Development or the police. We're talking about every school. We're talking about every uh, state-owned enterprise and so forth. That's becoming incredibly unwieldy and unnecessary. And I think my colleague earlier, Brett Hudson, highlighted something as well. There's a huge cost here. If every government agency, every school, everything connected to the government has to start overhauling its system uh, for the sake of just, um, well, a desire a desire of the opposition to have it for the sake of it. The bill is very clear, and again, as has always been drafted, and I should point that out, as has always been drafted, a government agency must use, may use it. Look, where I want to focus, though, is really around the issues of privacy. So um, it's round about how we access uh, the register. One thing that came up quite um, early from submitters was, you know, how is information going to be uh, protected and who's going to have access to that? So importantly, and first and foremost, the register is looked after by a registrar. That's going to be appointed through this bill and through, the, I think it's the so uh, State Services Act, so that's um, all pretty normal. That person, he or she, will have oversight and ultimately um, the information within it is, is fairly limited. Um, in fact, if we turn to Schedule 3, um, and just, I'm sorry to indulge the House, but I think it's quite important. Some people who came before the committee or in conversations were very much concerned that huge amounts of information were going to be given out. What we're talking about is the legal entity's uh, name, any trading name, I and mean, that's pretty uh, normal again if those people who are interested in small business would like to go out. Uh, often there is a use of a trading name, thought I'd just help out a member there. Uh, a registered address. Uh, a location identifier, that's quite important to someone who studied geographic information systems years ago. Actually quite uh, useful uh, to have that for mesh blocking and so forth. Uh, a start date of that entity and what kind of entity are they? So we're talking pretty basic uh, information there. Uh, the registrar is obviously enabled uh, the person who provides that information uh, to access it, to update it and make sure it's uh, accurate. Uh, they're also allowing where required government agencies uh, to get hold of that information. I think it's really important in this case, because there's often some fear about what government does, that a government agency, and actually the committee spent a bit of time teasing this out, um, they can access uh, that data first and foremost if another act gives that government agency the power to do so. Okay, so a, a government agency can't simply access your business number because they want to. Uh, they must not only want to, but be enabled and authorised by an existing act. There is then a secondary clause which allows um, that entity, that government agency, if you will, to approach the registrar and explain um, its reasons. And the entity itself, this is in uh, clause 27, uh, 1A Part B, that the NZBN entity has consented in a manner determined by the registrar to the government agency accessing that data. Look, it's a small point, but a really fundamental one, that again, limited information uh, is being shared. A government agency is able to access it if another act already in force authorises that, and uh, in other circumstances, uh, the entity must authorise it. Um, Importantly in all of this, uh, the Select Committee heard from the Privacy Commissioner and from the Government's Chief uh, Privacy Officer. Uh, they submitted to the committee that evidence uh, was weighed up, uh, and my understanding that they are pleased with the provisions uh, set out in that regard. 
ultimately, this is a uh, register. It has to have a degree. Of... Oh. Oh. Nicole um, Fletcher Tabato. Mr. Chair, it's a pleasure.